Hi guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie. So today I'm here with a little gift guide video, a little book gift guide I should probably say. So it is now just under two weeks till Christmas. Well it's like a week in what? Friday, Saturday? A week and three days till Christmas. And you're probably going, oh god I don't know what to get that person in my life that I don't know what to get them. Well, sometimes the best thing to get someone is a book because a book, no matter what genre of book you like, everyone reads. So it's always good to kind of promote reading, especially in children and in other people. It's it's always great to have a book by your side when you're in the bath or when you're sleeping at night, like to get you to sleep. It's always great. So here are five books I think will go to everybody. The first book I have is Girl Online Going Solo by Zoe Sugg aka Zoella from YouTube. So the back of this says Penny's life is back to normal. As Penny starts the school year she's ready to face the world alone. Noah has gone off the radar after ending his world tour early and no one, including Penny, knows where he is. So when she accepts Megan's invitation to visit her performing arts school it seems like an opportunity to make some new friends. Helping everyone else seems to be the right remedy. Elliot needs her friendship more than ever and she meets Posey, struggling with stage fright and in need of support. But is charming Scottish boy Callum the right kind of distraction? And can Penny truly move on when Noah's shadow seems to haunt her round every corner? Now, if you have a little brother or a little sister or a best friend who loves Zoella on YouTube, really honestly buy, buy them these books because this is the third in the series. The first one is Girl Online, the second one is Girl Online on tour and this is the third one. Now in fact I do have uh, all three books. This is all three books, blue, pink and orange. The first one I do have in uh, hardback but I'm sure, actually it's down there, it's too far away but she brings them out in hardback and then she's recently brought them out in paperback. They're actually a really good value for money. I'll link on, I'll link all the books on Amazon down below and on Waterstones. Um, so this is the first one. And this is the second one. Now this second one is very special to me because it happens to be signed by Zoe herself because I went to Edinburgh and got it signed by her. So that's actually, she physically signed that for me. Um, so yeah, it's these books are great for kind of young fiction but it's not too young if you know what I mean. It's not like childlike. Like I'm 21 and I still enjoy these books so it's not a big like oh god you have to be you know under 18 to read the books. No you can be I think about 13 and up I think suits it. Next book is uh, My Life with Bowie, um, The Spider from Mars. This is by Woody Womansey. Now I don't have a physical copy right now because the physical copy is wrapped up downstairs from my dad for Christmas but I'll insert a picture here obviously. So this book is basically an autobiography by Woody Womansey on his life and his life with the legend that is David Bowie. Now the reason behind this, he started writing this in 2014 and then he read some stupid articles in 2015 about Bowie and about Bowie's life and someone said to him like why don't you just write a book and he went you know what screw it I'm gonna. So he wrote a book and um, it's more for anyone that is a David Bowie fan and sort of really likes Bowie or doesn't really know much about Bowie but wants to know something because Woody Woodmansey was Bowie's drummer on The Man Who Sold The World, Ziggy Stardust and a few other albums and in 2015 both Woody Woodmansey and David Bowie's producer Tony Visconti took The Man Who Sold The World on tour and played it and it was amazing. I luckily was able to go see it in Glasgow. It was insane and I really really enjoyed it. They didn't just play Man Who Sold The World which by the way had never ever been toured before but they played stuff like Suffragette City, Ziggy Stardust, um, Moonage Daydream, all the kind of cool songs that you guys know and love. So if you know someone that is a huge David Bowie fan or wants to know more about Bowie that book is perfect for them. Next up is No Time For Goodbye by Linwood Barclay. This book is incredible. If you love a good thriller or you know someone who loves a good thriller then this book is for them. Now I rate this about 14 and up I would say. Um, there's some swearing in it, there's some violence and stuff like that but it is an amazing book. Now I say that I was reading it aged, I was reading it in 2009 I think. 
actually, sorry, 2007. I was 11 when I started reading this book, but I fell in love with this book. I don't know how I came across it, but I just bought it because I was into crime and thrillers and I bought it and it turns out to be my favourite book of all time. That's why it's managed to slip into this pile. It's not a new book. The rest of these books are new, as in they've come out very recently within the past couple of years. So this one is quite an oldie, but there is a segue due to the fact that the sequel has just come out in the past year or so. Um, it's called No Safe House. But Linwood Barclay is an amazing writer and this book is very unique in the fact that it follows Cynthia's story. Like the back says, the house was... <laughs> The back says the house was silent, no sound of her parents getting ready for work or her brother late for school. Were they punishing her for last night? She'd been out on a date when she had should have been studying and had a huge row with her father. So where was everyone? Why had her family disappeared? 25 years later the mystery is no nearer to being solved and Cynthia is still haunted by unanswered questions. Were her family murdered? Abducted? If so, why was she spared? And if they're alive, why did they abandon her? Then a letter arrives, a letter that makes no sense. Soon Cynthia begins to realise that stirring up the past could be the worst mistake she'd ever made. Now you probably expect either A to this to be in first person narrated by Cynthia or in third person. It's neither. It's first person narration by her husband. That is the most incredible thing about this book is the fact that it's not from Cynthia's point of view, it's from an outsider's unbiased point of view, which I absolutely love because you find out that he's more connected than he knows because he's an English teacher and the connections he knows from his school ends up, he ends up being the, the kind of head of the thing and everything's amazing and you hear how he met Cynthia and how his, it's, it's interesting to see from the point of view of a victim slash survivor's partner, if that makes sense, because we all hear about the victim's point of view and the survivor's point of view, but you never know how that affects the loved one of that person. So that's very interesting because obviously they met after Cynthia's parents had disappeared and her, little, her brother had disappeared. So it's very interesting to see that. Next up we have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo and this is a great book if you are struggling with gender and um, anything else just it's a very kind of interesting book. I, It's very big reviews, I got this for my birthday actually from my birth mum Jan and I really 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 wanted to read it and the back says Amanda Hardy is a new girl at school like everyone else all she wants is to make friends and fit in but Amanda's holding back even from Grant, the guy she's falling in love with. Amanda has a secret. At her old school, she used to be called Andrew and secrets always have a way of getting out. A book about loving yourself and being loved for who you really are. And that's important. It's an important book, I think, in this generation where gender stereotypes and everything is in the media right now. I think this is a very interesting book and it's worth it if you are, I would say, 13 or up. I think it's worth it. I think everyone should read this. Even adults should read this because you know what it's like. Sometimes adults don't understand us kids because their generation is very different to ours. So if you haven't, if you yourself are maybe, um, if you yourself are transgender or you are gender fluid or anything like that and you think um, that you want your mum or your dad to maybe understand you a bit more or your friends or your loved ones, why don't you give them this book and get them to read it and then maybe they will be able to kind of have a bit of an insight so it's worth a read. And finally something for the LGBT community although that book also goes into it but this one is a sort of biography, autobiography I'm gonna guess. This is uh, Girl Love Girl by Lucy Sutcliffe which is in Sutcliffe? Sutcliffe, sorry if I said your name wrong. I love Lucy. I have loved her for years. Um, she is a YouTuber and she had a YouTube channel with her girlfriend, her ex-girlfriend, Kaylin. And it was Kaylin and Lucy and they were the, it was the most amazing thing and, you know, you know, it was just amazing. But so the, since this book has come out, they've actually broken up and my heart broke. But in the back it says, Lucy always knew that her idea of Prince Charming was different to that of other girls. And then she meets Kaylin online and everything starts to make sense. Could her Prince Charming be a girl? An inspiring and uplifting memoir about falling in love and finding yourself. Um, Kaylin and Lucy's lifestyle blogs and videos have over 25 million views. Follow their everyday life and adventures. So this is really cool because this has sort of, I think it's got like email things in it as well. So... 
um, I think that's really cool is it? it's just kind of their life in a book and I think that's for anyone that's in a long distance relationship because that's what they were at the start if you're in a long distance relationship or you've found love online or if you just want a love story for the ages because although they've broken up that doesn't mean that it's a bad love story it just means that it's a love story that ran its course so just like Romeo and Juliet their love story ran their course by killing each other or killing themselves but you know every good love story ends so it doesn't have to be a happy ending that could be a happy ending for Caelan and Lucy by breaking up no matter what it's a happy ending in the end so this is definitely worth a book if, uh, read if you are into your love stories and um, your kind of memoirs and long distance love I think it's going to help a lot of people so that was it the five books that I think in the run up to Christmas if you're struggling next week I will be here with the five DVDs that you guys need to purchase for your friends and family if you're struggling on what to get them. I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye!